So are your sister. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. So we are finally here. My husband has been waiting for the last 50 years. <laughs> we, have, we have Homestead. Hey, hey. hey guys. Y'all make sure y'all check out their YouTube channel. Are we? So I'm Jared. And I'm Angela. Angela. And we are the Beehive Homestead. Mm -hmm. We are here in uh, Farron, Virginia. <laughs> and we got our little five acre. Homestead in the making. Little. Hey, it's our mm -hmm. a little piece of paradise, <laughs> as we like to call it. So, we got our chickens, our bees, and our cows, our new family members. Yeah. They're mm -hmm. still young. Yeah. <laughs> How many? This is all from, from that wall cutout I did. It's just like it's just the way they build it and different stuff like that. And that's like where they had like more of their eggs, and then some of this stuff is like where their honey. So how how did you get into this? Get into doing it? Yeah. yeah. The bees and bee cutouts. You know what? I just saw the many different you smell that one. That's really good. I just kind of mm. started watching videos actually on YouTube, and I was like, man, I wonder if they're around my area. Mm -hmm. I was like, I wonder if they're around my area. And then sure enough, I just happened to know or, or got in touch with some people. They were like, looked on Facebook some of the beekeeping clubs. Mm -hmm. People started posting all the time. Hey, any bees removed? Any bees removed? How often should I go into the hive to, to, to inspect and make sure everything's good? So now that we're approaching winter, again with y'all's temperature, mm -hmm. any day that it's above 50, you can go in there and look. Mm -hmm. Usually with the winter, I'll go out there and I'll just come up to it right here and I'll put my ear close to it in the first of the morning. I'll tap it. You hear them vibrate. Mm -hmm. Hey, they're good to go. Mm -hmm. But usually once once spring comes around, you go to check them. Mm -hmm. I usually like to do it once every three weeks, right. four weeks. Uh, sometimes you get it more, you're brand new. You'll probably, once you start doing it, oh, you'll have that itch to keep on keep getting on doing it. Hey, beginning of the year, you can do it. You can get in there as much as you want, as little as you want. But usually, as long as you get in there, I like to do it twice a month at least. Every two weeks, get in here and you see what's going on because in two weeks period, you can see a correction as far as like their brood cycle because it's 21 days. Mm -hmm. So if, say if they're getting mites or there's like a lot of hive beetles, within that two week period, you can start monitoring them and doing stuff to correct some of the mistakes. Like we're uh, we're here in October. We have some warmer days, you know, still coming on where it's above, you know, 60 stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'll finish doing like some of the or I'll do some extra treatments on them, and then um, I'll put like not screen like this, but I'll, I'll shrink down some of their entrances and stuff like that, whether it's with wood or not. But I'll shrink down some of that, and then start putting like some of these on there and stuff like that to start allowing for the ventilation, and uh, and just let them be. I won't get into them until. Uh, the spring comes around, mm -hmm. and then after I, uh, when spring comes around, then I'll start checking them periodically, and then start throwing more boxes on to get some of the honey. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're going to talk about getting the honey at some point. So I'm definitely. Oh yeah. You see, this is a very, very, very active hive. As you can see, they're trying to obviously get out with it, but mm -hmm. you see the entrance here. These are all like the foragers and stuff. They're trying to get out and go get that pollen. Mm -hmm. And then you have like the other bees, the worker bees that are staying in here with the queen and tending to the eggs and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So they're, it's a very good sign to see all that. Cause you look at some of the ones like see, they're, they're active, but they're not like this. These are ready to just, if I took that screen off, man, they would just pile out right. and start going. Stand in front of the entrance when you're checking them, mm -hmm. they get a little more irritated. So what we'll do, I'll set you stand there. I'll get on this side. This is one that I had to save because the uh, they got they were getting robbed out, so I had to split them down. So let's see. I usually like to take one out and just look to see. Oh, that's a small frame. I got to put a large one in there. It's supposed to be larger. Didn't know it was small. No queen on there. Just a couple bees. No eggs. I'll give you a walk through and show you. This one, I'll probably end up having to combine just because it's weaker. Mm -hmm. um, especially since it did get it did get robbed out pretty pretty bad. You see, it has like no resources. Right. I'm looking more for the queen for you, so I can show you. So I don't even see eggs in this one. As soon as I see eggs, I'll show you. So she's probably gonna be on this next frame. Whoops. You can see, like right here, let me brush them to the side. See right there is like brood, the flat mm -hmm. cells. Those are the worker bees and stuff. 
or the, the those will be worker bees or like the winter bees that she's preparing and I don't know let me see if I can see in any of these cells I'll tip it up and see I don't see eggs on this side so what we'll do is we'll roll it over on the other side and I'll see what we're, we're looking at let's see yep if I'll flip it around for you show you yeah yep if you look inside you see like little white pupas in there looks like smaller pieces of rice oh, inside the cell yep inside those cells like you sometimes you can see like white down in there mm -hmm. those are the eggs okay. now I'm gonna show you the queen is right on oh, this I see it. you see her yeah red yep see that old big old booty on her mm -hmm. she's a nice tiger stripe pattern and that is her that's wild so yep. she's pretty noticeable yep that knows some people put like a paint dot on them yep yeah I got I got uh, like the paint markers and stuff like that that you mm -hmm. can Put a dot on and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But see, yep, she is a good old pattern. And like I said, let me see. Roll them a little bit. Let's see. Yeah, if you look, so in this one right here, I don't know if it's, you can try to tip the light. You see like little pieces of rice. It's kind of hard to see. Okay, let's see if I can turn it this way and you see in the light. Oh, yeah, yeah. Those are like day old eggs. That's how you know you can do a split. But those are the brand new. Oh, it's okay. Hmm. Those are the eggs with it, and then see, you get a, you get a lesson here. See right here, there's a little black beetle mm. that's walking right there. Where on the it? bottom right in here, he just went down. Uh, he might be on the other side. Let's see. Yeah, right there. See a little black beetle. Yeah. That's a hive beetle. That's the stuff that you you know watch for as far as pests. Right. I usually just smack them off or whatever. Mm -hmm. But see how calm they are, mm -hmm. and you can. Shoot, if you want to, you can even put your, you can even feel, you can put your finger mm -hmm. right against it and you can feel this. Wow, this first touch of the bees. <laughs> they, oh, wow. Just the vibration, they're very, they'll get used to your scent and stuff like that, but they're just very, very calm, very docile. And that one queen rules them all, which, well, she can let's see, if you can see, let's see if you can see her again. And sometimes, yeah, I can see her. She likes to hide a little bit. Let's see this thing. So one thing I do is if you can't find them like that, mm -hmm. you just do a little. Oh, nice. See, see they start moving. Yeah. Yep. See and see. She tries to hide under bees. Mm -hmm. That's her protection, huh? Yep. So see there she is, looking for a place to lay, dragging the big old butt across. <laughs> yep, that's her. That's pretty cool. They'll feed her and tend to her. <laughs> you see, she'll, walk, she'll probably walk around and go to the other side. Mm. She realizes, hey, this isn't where I can lay eggs. So she'll just walk herself. See, queens also, I think they say that queens like it dark. Mm -hmm. So they like to go to the dark places. Mm -hmm. Like inside of a hive, that's where they stay. Excuse me, stay. So we'll let her walk to the other side. And there she goes. <laughs> and see, she was on this one, so what we'll do here, because we know the bees were here. Mm -hmm. And see, we were below freezing yesterday, or like last night. Uh -huh. Or not below freezing, we were like, it was like 37 when we woke up, and they did just fine. Sometimes, like even below freezing, a lot of people are like, man, you gotta wrap them up, gotta do all this. Mm -hmm. No, they're pretty, they're pretty docile. So pretty, do you ever do anything with yours? Sometimes I'll, I'll wrap them, or not wrap them, just put a little insulation if we're getting a really bad winter. Mm -hmm. Lately we haven't. And see, like, this is all foundationless. You see right here, it doesn't have no string or nothing, but they've built all this comb. Right. So it's just very loose. And see, they're stocking up. I have to go, I think I told you, I go cut bees out tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So that hive I probably cut, mm -hmm. I'll probably take and put these bees with those ones. Because these ones will not survive our winter the way they are now. Even if I was to feed them, mm -hmm. you know, gallons and gallons, they're just... Not enough. Not enough time mm -hmm. left in the season. And that's sometimes what you have to, you know, take with it as you like look at this. This is this is probably I'd say about a about a thousand bees. Wow. That's about it. So how when you put the new bees in there, how's that any different than the robber the robber bees? So one thing that I like to do different mm -hmm. is like so say this was a, a brand new hive like frame of bees, I'll take mm -hmm. and spray it with some I take sugar water, mm -hmm. just like take a, like a cup of sugar water or a cup of water, mm -hmm. warm it up, mm -hmm. put it down there, 
and then I take vanilla extract. Mm -hmm. I spray a couple drops of vanilla extract. I'll spray like these bees that are the outsider bees, and then I'll spray the hive that's in here. Mm -hmm. So by the time I, when I put these bees back inside of it, mm -hmm. and they clean each other off with the sugar water, it, it only smells like vanilla. Mm -hmm. So that when they're done, when they clean themselves up and it goes away, they've yeah. acted like they've known each other all their lives. Ah, okay. So it's like a, it's like a switch basically. Mm -hmm. you, you reprogram their minds in a sense. You see, this one's. So if you actually find a queen to the other one, you won't. You'll make another um, high, or you just uh, get rid of her, or what you do? Uh, where it's this late in the season, most people try to like they'll kill her, mm -hmm. the queen to kill her. Yeah. I'm gonna try it a little different this year. I'm gonna try to keep her inside of my house in the cage because yeah. I have queen cages. Mm -hmm. I try to feed her sugar water every day, and, right? And honey, and try to keep her alive. Okay. That way, I can try to try to keep her just in case something happens. Because I had a hive, um, I had a hive one of these years. Um, they threw their queen out in January, and mm. you can't you can't put a queen in in January because mm -hmm. they won't make it. You know they they can't do it that way. So I'll just try to to grow her and stuff like that. And then if you want, what we'll do? You see this one, the water worked it. It's okay. I'm gonna put them in another box after this. Mm. You want to see one of these big boys? Sure. Right here, we gotta we gotta just. You can hear some of the rumble in front of me. I'll scrap these down right before that hurricane came. Mm. And by the way, if you see this right here, it's gonna on your hive that has it too. It's got a little hole. Yeah. That's all I did was I treated with the uh, oxalic acid to treat for mites, mm -hmm. just to make sure that they are healthy. And mites will kill a hive okay. very fast. So. Okay. How often do you need to do that? Well, usually you can treat once. Uh, well. I, it's usually like twice a year and stuff like that. I do it right in the fall because you don't have honey on that yeah. you're gonna take. So I, I treat them like that and then they'll be strong enough to last until the spring and stuff. Okay. So I, this is an inner cover. This goes on, this is what that one with the vent holes in it. Mm -hmm. This is the inner cover. So this is what separates or you can put your sugar, uh, um, sugar jar or sugar water jars on and stuff like that. And see, this is the super I put on, which looks like they got some honey in their building, some. So usually to crack these open, you break up the propolis, which is like their bee glue. Mm -hmm. You can take it and just you break it down in there with the tool, which I'll show you where you can get all your tools and stuff. You can get a whole set for like 15 bucks, okay. where it has like tools, everything. You see how like they're so calm, you don't, usually you, you, I mean, you could smoke them, but I mean, look at them right now, you don't need to smoke them. They're very, very calm. So what I do is you just take this and you prop it underneath that frame, just brace it up. I like to hold this side. I come down here, do the exact same thing. And kind of just the trick of the trade for you. Mm -hmm. So e each time the bees build their comb mm -hmm. with their bee space based on the distance in between them. Mm -hmm. I always like to keep, I'm left handed, I like to keep my tool in. Mm -hmm. I always pull a frame on this back side. So anytime I adjust in the frame, you, you like develop a trick. And see, that's all honey. Mm -hmm. So what I like to do is I'll hold my frame like this. Mm -hmm. And I know this is the side that always goes in the back. Right. Even if you rotate it up, you know, you can look on both sides. Mm -hmm. You can check them all. You can see like, hey, I need to look at this. I need to look at that. Mm -hmm. It's like, see like right there, there's a hive beetle. I said right here, see right here? Mm -hmm. Hive beetle. So they'll they'll usually take care of them. And if they don't, I help them out. I like squish it for them. So that's all honey right there. Brand new honey that they harvested. Mm -hmm. Or not harvested, but they've been, been saving up. Mm -hmm. And it's capped. Same thing with that side. So like this, this is not sugar water. They have, obviously you see they're not being fed sugar water. Right. But this right here, when your guys come out of winter, it's like, hey, you're getting ready to put a box on for spring. Mm -hmm. Well, I want them to, uh, I want to take some honey for myself. You could take this frame out and spin it down. Right. It's kind of just like the hive that you have. So see, another thing that I like to do is, so you see here, this is this is the honey super. That's where they usually, you saw there's no eggs and stuff on there. Mm -hmm. This is where they store you know, most of their honey. But then in here, you see some of the boxes over time, like this one, I'll put tape on and then replace with those ones I got in my shed. Right. How long it took you to build up all those boxes? You see, you've been doing this? I've been doing it six years now, but with these, as far as uh, doing it, I just look for deals when I find deals. Right. I pop them okay. on there like that one I found with there, but most of this stuff, I've accumulated in the last two years or so. Okay. <clears throat> and see like right here, this one is probably one that I could 
speed if they don't bring more because they always do this they shrink their numbers down so you saw that all the hive or the honey is on mm -hmm. this side see like this one's right here it's not used with anything it's just empty yeah. <clears throat> so i could if i wanted to i could let them backfill like see here's a good example of what will happen sometimes they were doing great on this frame but then didn't do anything on this one mm -hmm. so i need to put more wax on here but you put more wax on it yep i take like uh when we render down wax mm -hmm. i'll take it and just smear it on the back uh -huh. and it makes them draw it out faster okay. draw out their cells and stuff like uh like when they don't have any foundations mm -hmm. and see this right here let's see what we got here which this is a this is an average size colony for coming into winter they're making their winter bees they start pushing out all their male bees and just got females oh look you see what i see Yep, I see ya. See her? Yeah. And see, she's a different one. Those other one was tiger stripe. She's orange. A nice, pretty queen. Mm -hmm. And see, no eggs on that side. But then let's look on this side. Yep, there's a bunch of eggs on this side. So they're working it over here. So they don't cover them? No, they'll cover them. So it takes 21 days. So like, when you saw those pieces of rice, mm -hmm. like in these small cells, you see like the ones that look like a piece of rice. Those mm -hmm. are usually like one to three old egg, day old eggs. So they'll take it and start putting feed in there. Then they'll start growing, the eggs grow in a circle. They'll start growing and growing and eating. Mm -hmm. But then within 21 days, on the 21th day, or like 17 days, they'll cap it over like this and then they'll grow out and then they'll end up hatching out. How long would it take them to hatch out? 21 days. Well, so, for a okay. worker is 21 days, a drone is 24 days. Gotcha. So you have, in 21 days, every, let's see if I find a nice good cell of brood right here and I'll show you. When you see like the, ex you like all of a sudden you'll check a hive and then two weeks later it'll be like it'll explode in size because like see all those cappings, mm -hmm. those are all getting ready to hatch within the next day or two. Wow! So all those will start happening, hatching. The uh, the queen, not the queen, the the other bees will uh, they'll eat their way out of it. Let's see if I can see one. See if we, usually you can find them when they're eating their way eat like they'll start eating their heads out and stuff like that but here's a good example let's see if i can afford it so i can show you what they look like before looks like right in here right up top okay i found it i'm sure i ain't crushing no queen oh she was on the other frame so right let's see, let's see. right here there's a cell right here room mm -hmm. see how it's open yeah i'll tip it up so you can see it but mm -hmm. see how it's got like a bee head in it See how it's like almost fully capped? Mm -hmm. It's got a head in it. Yeah. So that's what will happen there. The beans, the bee is growing almost to the point of getting ready to hatch out. Mm -hmm. And they'll cover it up. And then within a matter of days, it'll it'll eat its, eat its way out to survive. It's kind of like a survival thing. they got to eat their way out to survive. Right. So. It's going to survive. Yep. And see, like, this is a good size colony for winter. See, it's just so they're very, you know, see, they're very, they're not, a lot of people think like, oh, they're going to freak out and stuff like that. They're very calm, very docile. See? And like, see how like they've grown. Why that's sticking up. So that's, that's what, sometimes they'll grow a wonky comb. I was going to tell you like right mm -hmm. here, this was actually a cutout I did and I put the comb here and see how they built this up. Mm -hmm. Usually I would take this off or straighten it up to make it and cut that off and straighten it. Mm -hmm. But being that it, we're coming into the winter, mm -hmm. I'll just leave it until uh, next year to see how like so this was several pieces that come together that's where the rubber band came from there's one here one here and that's where they connected it and then one here so they just combined it all together mm. so so you'll take some old cone that you got and you'll put it in there yep or like if uh so it's probably there was probably a ton of eggs on this and this mm -hmm. when i did the cut out of the wall i brought mm -hmm. it in one of those totes mm -hmm. put it in here and then i take rubber bands um like i'll show you on this last piece there's a rubber band So see, I'll take like a rubber band and I'll, I'll rubber band the comb into it and it'll make it all stick and they can they can build their path as far as like connected and stuff like that. Sometimes it'll be full pieces, right. sometimes it'll be half pieces and you put the rubber bands mm -hmm. and hold it just long enough to like come up to the top and make the little bridge across. Yeah. Okay. 
you see they're working on this they got some pollen in there so you can see some of the yellow and orange in there mm -hmm. yep so and, and like Kaylee she taught me I'll never forget it when she made her one comment and said even if the bees were to die in the winter mm -hmm. you did your one job you got them to pollinate throughout the spring mm -hmm. and that's what they're that's what they're bred for and see like this is their bee space and look, I can see it now we're gonna be doing as you and I are gonna be doing it I'll do be doing a zoom class with you mm -hmm. <laughs> online we'll, we'll do a zoom yeah, get a couple people that want new bees we'll do a zoom beekeeping <laughs> Yeah, That's right. a lot of information too. I mean, I I think the way my brain works, like I kind of feel like I got to know everything for all for it to work. Mm -hmm. But I know I got to start somewhere. So you're right, and and I'll be 100 percent honest with you. Mm -hmm. I've been beekeeping for six years, mm -hmm. going on six years, and I don't know everything. I think I know everything sometimes, but I don't. I learn every day, and I think that's one thing that it comes down mm -hmm. with um with beekeeping, mm -hmm. especially is a uh, a common ground with letting these girls right here be your teacher. Right. It allows them to show you like what they need or what needs to be fixed, mm -hmm. things like that. These, no book could teach me that, no person, no computer, no nothing. These girls right here, they're the source of my knowledge. That's mm -hmm. why I said a thinking chair to you. Right. I'll sometimes be sitting out here and I'll just watch them. Mm -hmm. because each hive will do different, you learn different cues of like, like you'll learn a waggle dance when bees find a certain area for pollen and stuff you'll see the way they'll shake their butt and start mm. moving mm. and it's just something that you you pick up they'll be you know like cleaning the front of the hive it's called washboarding they'll be walking up and walking down i never learned that in any book or anything just right. learned it from watching them and then i googled hey when a bee does this mm -hmm. what is this so because they taught me i was able to search it right and get more knowledge mm -hmm. and okay. i think that's as long as you keep an open mind mm -hmm. on Hey, I'm, they might not look the best, or I might be struggling this first time. As mm. long as you learn, like there's some lesson learned mm. with it, and with that open mind that you always know that hey, there is a lesson I can learn. Mm. You will never get tired of it. You will never know it all, mm. but you will just feel so much. I guess you'll feel closer to them. You'll feel like you're gaining so much knowledge. Right. That's how I am now, as far as like learning with it. Like anytime I hear another beekeeper I always listen to everything they say because they may teach me something new mm -hmm. that I don't know about right or that may do something just a better way a more efficient way right but it's always keeping that room to grow mindset and then you have these girls basically giving them their best life they can be that's right that's sweet so when you are um, out here watching do you have the top off it or are you just watch them come in and out there in treats I usually watch them coming in the entrance now mm -hmm. if it's like a warmer day or I'm not worried about robbing mm -hmm. sometimes I'll just open it up and I'll stand I'll, I'll go on like a veil or even just some suit like here and I'll just come out here and I'll just I'll just you know prop it up mm -hmm. and just watch them just watch how they're flowing how they're doing it how mm -hmm. they'll insert it and sometimes even you can pick up a frame when you're watching them and just watch how it's it's amazing how they can go in and start filling it with the nectar mm -hmm. and start like cleaning the cells and stuff getting ready for the queen mm -hmm. so it's and then when you see like a baby bee being born or watch a queen got to see a queen coming mm -hmm. out of her queen cell it just depends like they see how they're they look like they're getting more rowdy, but they're getting more active. Because mm -hmm. we got the sun beating on them. They're like, they're like let's move, let's keep going. Mm -hmm. So that's what they're doing. So if another queen come out, what do you, I mean, what do you do with it? Because it can't be number one, right? Yeah, it can only be one. So like right here, mm -hmm. that cell that we saw in here, mm -hmm. if, if that cell had it, like was capped or had an egg in it, mm -hmm. I would go ahead and, obviously it's late in the year, but mm -hmm. I would take that queen cell and take, so many frames of bees, so many frames of eggs, and I'll move it into like a smaller box like that. Uh, and okay. then that's a split. You right. take that out, take okay. the queen that's capped, because once you already have a capped queen cell, mm -hmm. they're going to swarm regardless, so they're going to split themselves. Right. So if you come in there and take that extra step, mm -hmm. and you move them, mm -hmm. you don't even have to worry about it. You're just kind of beating them from, you're giving them a second home rather than them mm -hmm. taking off on right, you. Right, right. So that's just, so you just got to keep vigilant on the queen cell how long they take you know yeah so well when they come time to swarm and stuff like that from a queen from it being from a queen cell being made mm -hmm. to hatching takes 16 days Ooh, okay so that's when you watch it like you'll see like a queen cell start to develop mm -hmm. and then once it starts to develop um you'll start seeing the royal jelly that's how you know if it's a real cell or not you'll see the royal jelly it's a white liquid that starts going inside of it and mm -hmm. you'll know mm -hmm. yeah. You'll get a, you'll get, you'll start seeing that royal 
uh, jelly start filling up and then you'll all of a sudden see an egg in there the next day. And then a couple days from then you'll start seeing it slowly starting to come out to a long cone. Mm -hmm. And the queen cells will probably be about about an inch or so right. long and then they'll start getting that capping on the top of it. So is the queen cell developed because it's time it's too many bees? Or is it just something that happens every so often? Um, so, for example, if this queen mm -hmm. all of a sudden start, stopped laying, like mm -hmm. she hit her age and she, she stopped laying, the bees will get a sense like, oh man, she's not doing the best. We mm -hmm. need to supersede her. We need to change her out. Mm -hmm. They will start creating their own cell. Mm -hmm. And then what they'll do is when they cap that cell off and that queen's about to hatch, mm -hmm. they'll kill the other queen. They'll kick her out or they'll they'll be like, hey, see you later kind of thing. Okay, so when another, one, another queen comes, it's not necessarily the swarm all the time it's sometimes it's replace the other one correct or like say where i was doing this and mm -hmm. i dropped the frame mm -hmm. and I accidentally squished her mm -hmm. the pheromones will dissipate within a, a couple hours and they'll be like oh man we don't have a queen now mm -hmm. so those brand new eggs you saw they'll mm -hmm. start creating a cup and within three days you'll have a fully queen cell ah. that they'll start like creating it like oh man we gotta mm -hmm. we gotta do something to so we can survive so that's kind of like you said it's not always a bad thing or it's not always swarms mm -hmm. it could be it's like you start with this when you see a queen cell, mm -hmm. it's like a bracket. Oh, it could be super seizure, it could mm -hmm. be swarm. Mm -hmm. Okay, why is it this? Is it because she's sick mm -hmm. or is it because there is no queen? Mm -hmm. So they'll start to it or it's like if they're going to swarm too many bees or um, you need to just do a split. Like there's different brackets. You right. Break down off of. So, so like can, can I look and see? Like it's too many bees, so that that, that um, queen cell is the, the swarm or? Yeah, so usually when you see a frame, I'm mm -hmm. gonna show you one of the frames so you can see. I'll show you what I'm talking about. I see how important the tool is now. Yeah, this this is these are one of my favorites that have the, the J hook on the back. Mm -hmm. It's it makes it so much easier to grab, especially lift it, because these these will get heavy. I mean I'll let you feel this after this this can get pretty heavy. So usually when you're dealing with the bees and you see it, um, usually, so when it's a swarm cell, mm -hmm. you'll see cells appearing down here on the bottom. You'll mm -hmm. see like those queen cups that you saw, the circle mm -hmm. cups, they'll have like three or four of them on the bottom. Okay. And that means like, hey, they're trying to just take any egg and make the first queen they can possibly make. They're trying mm -hmm. to get rid of it. Right. Usually when you see a queen cell up top, they'll usually have them on these outer bands or just up top in mm -hmm. the box. Mm -hmm. That's showing it's like, hey, either that queen's sick, we don't like her, she ain't laying a good pattern anything so it's like we're gonna make a new queen usually that's where the, they'll be like hanging they look at like top. this hanging down just like that just mm -hmm. hanging straight down from mm -hmm. the top where most of the others will be on the bottom and okay. you'll see like and they're like a hive like this mm -hmm. you pull it through the winter like y'all you pull it through the winter mm -hmm. it comes time for you to just split mm -hmm. sometimes you can have six or seven cells in there and what i like to do with that is i'll take you know three four of those cells with mm -hmm. the frames and put them all in one because only one queen's going to survive mm -hmm. but they'll choose the best the first one that hatches will survive Right. So it's like you give them a chance, you give them four chances to make a queen. Mm -hmm. So, and I have a, I have a frame in there, I'll show you what the queen cup actually looks like. I have one one down bottom and one up top, mm -hmm. so you can actually see the, the representation. So the one at the top is the one more likely just to replace the other queen? Yep. And the ones at the bottom is the swarm? Yep. Okay. That, that's, that's, it's very rarely that I see a queen cell up, top, up here mm -hmm. and, and it not be just, or be a swarm cell. Mm -hmm. Now you may this is again this is going to throw a little wrench in it mm -hmm. you may like if, if you saw how those frames grow wonky down there mm -hmm. you may see one if like there's a break in comb like say this is two pieces of comb mm -hmm. you may see one here but that's mm -hmm. because it's considered an outer edge if that makes sense mm -hmm. like sometimes they'll lay them down here or they'll be like here on the outside you'll mm -hmm. see them growing like here mm -hmm. but if you like on that one frame down there we saw it was split in the middle mm -hmm. they may stick it on the outside of the comb it's still a swarm cell because they're sticking it on the out either the outer or the bottom okay if yeah. that makes sense. I, like uh, usually the only way you'll see a super seizure, a super seizure will be actually attached to the foundation somewhere in the middle or the upper section, like up here. Like usually within these smaller bands, mm -hmm. they'll be attached there where the swarm cells will, something like if this was all hollow right here and mm -hmm. just the edge, like I say it curved back in, mm -hmm. they will sometimes attach a queen cell to the side. And the reason they do that is, so for example, when a queen cell comes in, the bees are going to try to keep it warm and they'll circle it, but when she eats herself out of it, mm -hmm. they'll go back and they'll eat that cell down. Right. So if, it, if it's right up against like a hole or something, they can't get her out, she'll die. So that's why they kind of leave it with the most open space. That's why usually you see them hanging on the bottom mm -hmm. or hanging like off of the side. Okay. Hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, shoot it. If you want to, you can even put one hand on that or just, yeah, you can grab it right on the top. Mm -hmm. You can feel how, uh, how heavy it is. Oh, yeah.
that's that's probably honestly that's probably given the size if i had to take a guess at it because this is a medium mm -hmm. this is that's probably every bit of three or this one frame okay deep frames mm -hmm. one deep frame which is these bigger frames mm -hmm. if it was fully honeyed over it, it weighs eight pounds mm -hmm. so this one is just like two inches shorter mm -hmm. of it it's not fully so this is that's one of my other beekeepers i, I help with oh, okay <laughs> um but this right here this is probably every bit of four pounds of honey right there that you just lifted that yeah. just be straight honey coming out of this get you one of these man when you do your cut cut out get mm -hmm. you a, a good location mm -hmm. this sit up and, and just do your work and so i'm gonna do well, <laughs> i notice and even i can sit it here and it would yeah. follow can, mm -hmm. you know track and stuff because yeah i'd be setting up them four Chop foot off. five foot mm -hmm. we got the four foot five foot um camera stand and it makes it makes it tough mm -hmm. so that right there my friend is beekeeping one on one <laughs> that's what i do is, uh... and then see i like to when you put these on here mm -hmm. i like to shift them like this and you just shift back and forth mm -hmm. and it makes the bees see how it's like either pushing them out mm -hmm. push them down so you don't squish a ton of bees mm -hmm. like leave like that they'll come in here i'll take this Pop it back on top, just like that, and strap it down. All right. All right, guys. So this is my first lesson as a possible beekeeper. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say, 101? Beekeeping 101. Yes. So, hey, I'm excited to get started on this journey with this man's help, my teacher. So we're going to do this thing. We'll keep you all posted on my progress. Yes, sir. <laughs> all right. Just if you guys stop anywhere, does it say you eat or anything? Make sure you crack the window or whatever. It's like, hey, you too hot? Okay. So what happened to the ones that didn't make it back in there? Go to another hive? They'll join. Yeah, they'll join. I thought it was probably not good. See, like one, like one went in, in that way and went out the door. <laughs> that thing is heavy. Yep. And then, pop that here. I don't think there's any. I think that'll shut. Make sure. And then bust it. Oh yeah, you'll be good. Yeah. You want to get a, you want to get a picture of them right there? Look at all those heads in there. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, I'm gonna back up. <laughs> this one is determined. Did you know where's that? Right here. There you go. Proud of you. <laughs> hey. All right, here we have Lula and Gracie. These are our Jersey mixed girls. This is a Jersey Guernsey, and this is our Jersey Ashire. They're our first dairy cows. They're getting their first serving of milk for the day. So what does this milk consist of? Um, this milk, so normally they get whole milk, mm -hmm. whole cow's milk. We um, herd share with a local dairy farmer. Mm -hmm. um, this one, I've actually done half whole milk and half milk replacer because our milk was a little low today. Um, our helper who took care of them while we were over vacation either gave them extra feeds or extra bottles. Mm. <laughs> so, we'll get some more milk today. So we had to do half and half. So this is going to be a part of the homestead here. That's with the right. farm. Right. Um, they're actually doing really good when it comes to feed. They are already eating grass grain and they're drinking water on their own mm -hmm. so we're getting to the point of weaning back their milk feedings now uh -huh. so now we're doing once a day great and how old are they now they are about three months three months yeah. and how old are they when they consider grown that's a good question i'm not quite sure about mm -hmm. grown mm -hmm. i do know when it comes to uh mating them we have to wait until they're at least 16 months old 16 months okay mm -hmm. preferably so, two years so you gonna mate them while you gonna get your bull at some point? Um, we're 
probably going to find a local um, cow farmer like we have one right behind us here mm -hmm. and see if we can make one of their bulls. Mm -hmm. If not, we'll do the artificial insemination, mm -hmm. kind of pick your breed. Next goal for them is to build a shelter for them before winter comes in. Yeah. Okay. So Sherry, what you think about this? Huh? Um, I think it's pretty cool. We need cows. <laughs> we need to start at this size so we can get used to them being huge. But now I can milk a cow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then I can palpate one. So what's y'all plans? Are y'all planning? Are y'all doing it for the milk? Or? Yes. Uh, these are going to be our dairy girls. Mm -hmm. um, we may breed with an Angus. Mm -hmm. Um, and if we get an Angus cast, we might use that one for milk. No, okay. That would happen. She's second air, so she's done. I don't get that. <laughs> and she'll get so much air sometimes, she'll get the yeah. Good girl. when she's done. Good girl. <laughs> she said, I still don't like y'all. Uh -huh. <laughs> and you're going to see something. They are, they associate us as mama right now. So they may start headbutting their shoes too, because she drinks so fast. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. And they, they will startle each other and fight sometimes. The reason why we feed them through the fence, mm -hmm. they will associate you as mom mm -hmm. and keep headbutting you. Okay. Uh, and I got headbutted in the belly once, and that was ooh, enough for me. So. Yeah, yeah, that's not good. <laughs> I'm done, baby. So that's pretty much how they get the milk by button up. Do the, okay. Yeah. So you can do a milk bucket that has nipples on them, mm -hmm. or you can get a holder to hold the bottle. Mm -hmm. so you can drink it that way. Mm -hmm. But we want to be more personable with them because if we're going to be milking them, we want them to know us. Right, right. They're the first round. They're the ones who are going to teach us everything we need to know. Right. I know that's got to be exciting, though, isn't it? He was telling me that um, they'll yeah. suck your finger. I said, so they don't have teeth? They won't bite you? They don't have it. She's still hungry, but she's still gonna headbutt. Sometimes yeah. to keep them occupied. <laughs> There's a lot of saliva, but yeah. it doesn't hurt. That is cool. Yeah. And this your... Yep. Yeah. Alright. So starting here, this... Yeah. Yeah. See, so your top left here, that's honey from North Carolina. That's um, my parents' honey. They have an herbal garden, so you may be able to taste a little bit in there. Not good. <laughs> I do taste a little minty or something. Uh huh. They have a lot of peppermint, lemongrass, and have a uh, Okay. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> a little minty. Okay. Alright, your next one here is a starker one, looks like molasses. Mm -hmm. That's actually honey. Um, that is honey here from Theorem, our neighbor down the way. Um, honey, what's the honey, the wheat that cross, causes the dark honey? You what? The dark honey from John? Uh, Buckwheat. Buckwheat. Oh my God, that's my brother's nickname. <laughs> and that's what that is, right? Yeah. Buckwheat. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that looks like jelly. Spring. Yep, this is the, this is the dark honey. That almost looks perfect. Yeah. This one almost tastes like syrup. Like molasses? Yeah. 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 It's, it's like a very earthy taste. That's what I love about it. It's just mm -hmm. like, and it smells completely different. Like, um. This is like. Oh, my water honey. That's crazy. Isn't it? And you can smell. Yeah, yeah. You can smell it. Honey, honey. It smells it wild. Like it's dark, so it might smell like mm -hmm. mm -hmm. it's different mm -hmm. here. That smells like a herb. They do. Yeah. That's weird. That's the that's the, the buckwheat. So that's that's my favorite. Mm. It's like it's a very I like the herb down like the floral mm. fragrance or floral. But that's that's yeah. nice. That one So that that wouldn't taste like this one did. No, no more honey. Because no more that smells that was a different jar. Oh is that the same the different, different year? Oh so it's a different year. Oh, okay. Also it may taste a little bit. Shoot. Because that don't that don't actually yeah, don't smell pour it. like this taste. That, she can't get more honey. Oh just do it in here. Something okay, it's so good. Right. Mm -hmm. If you want to try too, I'll do it. <laughs> it's all good. So, from year to year, the honey will change. Depending on 
where they can have pollen from, which you have to go in your garden. <laughs> yeah. And they go out a, up to a three mile radius to mm. collect their pollen. So they yeah. have whatever's being thrown around you as well. Mm. Yeah, that tastes different. Doesn't different year. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. And see, that's the same same kind of honey, but different year. But this, like, this is the favorite. Mm. This is the good honey. Because mm-hmm. the other one had more of a syrup like mm-hmm. flavor. This one, I can't really describe that one. That one, that one was more like taste. a molasses on mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's it's wild because he. So this honey was the. Th- this is the one that was 2020. The first one that y'all had was from 2019. Mm-hmm. Mm. That was that the dark one was the 2019. So how they get um, something from lemongrass? I don't understand. Did they chew on it or not? The some of the oils like that they can even get the residue and get create or get nectar off of poison ivy and poison oak. You know, wow. like the oil that gets in our skin and mm-hmm. irritates us. They can actually get that and take that back and put it into their hive. Wow! I didn't know that. I found that out this year. Wow! So it's mm-hmm. something like that that they'll. I don't know, it's almost like rubbing their pollen sacks on their legs and like getting a bunch of stuff. Mm. They get that liquid on their body and stuff and head first into those exactly. cells. See, that's crazy because I only thought it was the pollen to get into the I flower and then, I mean, the flowers Daddy, get the pollen on them Daddy, and they pick them back. So they can get it off of weeds. And, yep. So we we have uh, we have tulip poplar. Mm-hmm. You ever heard of tulip poplar? Mm-hmm. So it's like a, it's like a it's like a buttercup kind of flower it looks like it mm. releases like this open petal it has pollen on this like the stamen of it the mm. giant thing but on the leaves it's got the, the actual nectar mm. so they take that nectar and they put it uh they rub their bodies basically like it's almost like a slide they slide down the flower petals get mm. all that nectar take it back and then then come back and touch like the stamen stuff pull all the pollen out of it and that's what gets that's like this is more like your tulip popular the higher uh, the lighter and the, the higher, like floral, mm-hmm. sugar level, I think. Yeah. Oh, I'm excited to be honest with you. I can't wait to see y'all's top of fruit. Mm-hmm. Like, what color the pollen looks like. Right. Yeah. That's pretty cool. That's going to be the good part. All the difference. Not realizing that honey can be so different according to what you're doing. this one back. So, the one on your bottom left mm-hmm. is this one. This is the one from 2020. That's the one that you try now. Okay. Wow. That's good. That's like so much wow. of a difference of taste. It's crazy. That's like um I don't know. Man, you can't really equate this to nothing else. What is that? Mm-hmm. Is this the floral one? This the one she like? Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. You know, like that. This tastes fancy. <laughs> like eating, eating good style. <laughs> and then that last one that you're going to try, that's from this year. That's this year's honey. That's all pungent right there. Yeah, this is the one that it's, it has a very pungent smell, usually like the wrap or pears and stuff can, like that. Can we come mm-hmm. over here and sit? It doesn't affect the taste of it. Oh, has, you can smell it. Yeah, you can smell it. It smells like... Can we come over here and sit? Hmm? Right. Come on, sure. So it has a smell, but then you try it and it's a good, like, I like the flavor, it doesn't bother me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a fly box. Oh, yeah. You say it's a pungent smell to it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you smell it? You couldn't smell it? Yeah, I smell it. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't taste like it smells. Exactly. exactly. So it throws you off when we first did it. Like Brad Repair has that fish smell. I sm- and I was like, oh Lord, mm-hmm. man, we done gotten into some bad honey or something. <laughs> yeah. like it's, 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 it smells like fish. It's so mm-hmm. spoiled. But, you know, honey doesn't spoil like that. I think I like the, the last one. Right before the last. Yeah, like this one. I, yeah. I like that one. I like them all, but I, I don't know, something about that taste. And I think it's because of I can't really equate it to nothing else. It's, mm-hmm. just... it's light and floral. That's one of my favorites. Mm-hmm. That was year 20. Is that one of our first few years? Yep. Keeping? Yeah, this was our first. It was like our, I guess our best, but proudest like year. Like yeah. we did, we tended to them like faithfully every every week I was out there checking them, mm-hmm. doing the supers and stuff. And and it like I had my best success rate. a lot of wildflowers too. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. You get so many different tastes. Look at yeah. that flower you got. The one that Jose gave. Oh, um, 
a B a B bomb or something? Oh B bomb. Yeah, we yeah. got B bomb drone right out there oh, right okay. now. Yeah. Something else with the yellow petals on it. That's the that's the B bomb, man. Mm -hmm. no, what is it? We got B I got B bomb. Um, There's different types of bomb. This one was something like a it looked like it's a something daisy for bees. or something. But you said it was for bees. It's, it's a pollinator. It's a right. black center. It almost looked like a cornflower. Oh, um, it has like four petals around it, right? Like four yellow, yellow petals. Black. Um, is it four or is it a bunch of? I don't know. If it's a, I think it's a bunch, but it got a weird name. Mm -hmm. Not weird, but it looked like a cornflower almost. Oh. But he said it's great for bees. Yeah, so I'm, I have to send you a picture of it um, if it's still blooming. Yeah. Because um, he said it was for bees, and I don't know. Yeah, that's cool. Does it look like? Does it look like that? Mm, it like a cone. More so. Are they rounded? Like the, the one, one at the bottom, bottom. on the left. Mm -hmm. Like that. Oops. If I can remember correctly, it's, huh? it looks. Closer to that one. Yeah, it looked closer okay. to that one. I have to see the picture because I Yeah, because I know the name over that one. Okay. He's in our chat all the time anyway. I asked him again what it was, but he just bought it. Um, he said he saw it somewhere and he bought them and he just bought us one. Yeah, he said it was red time. when it grows mm -hmm. and the bees love it. Really? There's some that I'm looking into. Some y'all can consider too because you can grow a small patch and having one hive that can do it. But it's like, a, it's called hyssop. Mm -hmm. Hyssop's a very good like bee one. Like, one. yeah, mm -hmm. you, you can grow. They said like one acre of uh, hyssop can support several hives for the whole season. Hmm. Just like, like even yeah. if it's an acre. So like having one hive and plant you a little bit of hyssop. Yeah. Plus, it's like you said, very good medicinal. Yeah. Too. Is it good flavor? Never had it. Uh, I just, I just do like this. As far as like these are just like Canadian beekeepers and stuff when they grow right, up there right. in the fields of it. Mm -hmm. They said it's like a, they, it's a very sweet aroma. Yeah. Because we were trying to grow hyssop and uh, we ended up planting at the last house and started to grow good but then the frost yeah. came through our late yeah. frost. Because we, we got hit with the late frost even this year like. Because it's almost early May. Like yeah. Early May. Yeah, we got hit with the late we frost. Hit frost mm -hmm. late. So I think um, um, what's up, guys? Um, Passion. Passion fruit. Oh, I want uh, I want that. And yeah. that, that bee stay in that all the time. Mm -hmm. And they got a really sweet smell to the yeah. flower. So I want to see that. We're going to have to buy some honey. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Get that chocolate for honey. Some of the, uh, I'm trying to see if I have it saved. Something you can do too, as you can see in your area, or if you can reach out to someone that's got bees that's like a higher up there and stuff like that, yeah. they have like pollen charts mm -hmm. where it naturally grows in your all's area. Because mm -hmm. like we can get everything from like obviously the bright red um, pollen, which is like the maples, mm -hmm. and then we get down to like almost like a black, which is coming from like the buckwheat and different like flowers. And we've even got some blue, like if you get like a then butterfly snap or butterfly pea and something. Mm -hmm. They can produce some blue pollen, get some blue flakes in there. Mm -hmm. So it's like it's pretty wild to really see. Like I got a whole man. chart that yeah. it can uh, and see that's just kind of fun. Yeah, I make um, lemonade. They with grow it. really easy. So yeah, like crazy. I'm here in a very short time frame to grow them, so I never had success. We grew that and um, Jamaican hibiscus this year for the first time. Really? Mm -hmm. The Jamaican hibiscus we didn't. I didn't know. I thought it was gonna be a little bush. <laughs> it turned out to be like a 14 foot tree that's that green thumb right there <laughs> and I put it in my tea bed which is about this big <laughs> and the tree trunk is like this big I was like one time we came back from Florida and half the tree was laying in the walkway I'm like oh my god I'm just going to rip it out but yeah, it's full of fruit now so. that's awesome yeah. that's awesome yeah. see that's something cool that's, that's one thing it's like like was watching you guys are seeing it like y'all can grow that it's like I yeah. told her for years, I'm going to try to grow a lemon tree. Mm. Like, it's part of like the high tunnel. So I'll bring that baby inside, keep it in a big yeah. old pot. Yeah. Really? Yeah. See, oh, I was yeah. like, but I wonder, like, is how warm do you have to keep it? Because our basement keeps a normal temperature, but I can build like a grow box around it. Mm. Um, well, we're talking about a lemon tree? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you need frost, right? If you um, get you a Myers lemon, mm -hmm. they're pretty hardy. Really? They will make it through our winter without a problem. And we can get down to 30, well, we can get 30 down. degrees. Yeah. And... But it's for a short period of time. Right. So I'm sure you can keep the tunnel above there. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. Last year when we finally, when you put plastic on that and you had the door shut, mm -hmm. 
I think it was like, well, we got down to like 18 degrees and that thing with the sun being on was 80 degrees in there. Yeah. You got no problem. You can grow yeah, anything. Yeah. The you can grow mangoes in there. Really? Yeah. Well, see, the only thing I guess to really worry about then when it comes down to that is the night temperature. Because mm -hmm. when obviously the sun goes away, it can drop it very fast. Yeah. How, how far did it drop? Yeah. I, I've seen it, well, I've seen it down to, to the high 30s. Low, low 40s. I will put, I will, I probably will put, um, well, for lemon tree, it probably will be fine. But if you're going to grow something that is tropical, you probably need some heat. Okay. Which we can, we can do like the bottle, I mean the barrels that we talked about, mm -hmm. paint them black, mm -hmm. let it draw on the heat all day, and then for that, shoot cow manure, natural manure produces mm -hmm. heat, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. But even, I even consider taking an old wood stove and at hey, night, so it's going to get colder, mm -hmm. pop some wood in there, yeah. and just circulate yeah. the heat. Yeah. Because we actually got a, <clears throat> a tube built for that. It's a metal tube that you can put a galvanized piece through it. Mm -hmm. oh, even you. if we get the solar panel <clears throat> and get you a, a heater or something. I didn't even think about that. A little, yeah. That's smart. Mm -hmm. Just something that will keep that temperature in a safe zone. You know, it ain't got to get hot, but just keep it from killing it. Yeah. This is this video. Come on. No, he gonna push yeah, you. Yeah, no, no, they're gonna talk. You gotta talk. Come, 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 come over here. You're gonna you gotta go over there and say something. And Look, they wanna go talk with you. No. <laughs> 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 you say you don't wanna do that. What? You wanna repeat what they say? Come on. Go ahead. Come on. You wanna close the video off for us? With the chicks. All right, come on. <laughs> you gonna talk about your, your honey? How good your honey is? Say, so don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. <laughs> 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 All right, soil fam. So, you ready for bees, babe? You got I'm definitely be. ready. You got to be. I'm definitely ready. Yeah. Am I ready for the ride home with bees? <laughs> <laughs> That's the question. <laughs> so, this was amazing. Mm -hmm. We ate an apple straight off the tree. Mm -hmm. And a pear. Mm -hmm. I yep. fed a cow. Mm -hmm. My husband played with bees a little bit. Mm -hmm. Say, so with that being said, don't let nobody steal your joy. <laughs> <laughs> Peace. Peace. <laughs> <laughs>